This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Paul Davis, servant and apostle the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to scripture, he was buried, he rose again, the third day, according to the scripture. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken order, preach deliverance to the captives, recover the sight to the blind, set at liberty to them that are bruised. Amen. The word is not thee, even in your heart, and your <coughs> now there's a word of faith which I preach, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved with the heart that believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And there's a power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it to the Jew verse and also to the Greek, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. <clears throat> Amen. Thank God. Amen. 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 Thank God. I want to welcome everyone to receiving this broadcast on live stream. Welcome, Apple TV. YouTube, <clears throat> other devices. <clears throat> Kathy Davidson, co-host, sitting to my left. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Amen. Well, I want to just say something to the Lord Jesus Christ. I am re ready for you to come. To come and heal me. Last Thursday morning, you told me you were coming. Don't delay any longer. It's been long enough. And I appreciate you and thank you for hearing my request. Let's hear some songs. Amen.
his eyes, saying is no one worthy to go.
his family, his mother. <laughs> Thank God. And all the people with him in California. Amen. Katie, what are you going to do? Hi, Brian. <laughs> you ready for my exhortation? For me? Yeah. I'm waiting. Ah, and I have a feeling you're going to pick it up and go further with it. If you, yeah. If you will go with me to 1 Corinthians 1. I posted it this morning, but it's still in my heart, so I'm going to minister it to us. 1 Corinthians 1. Have you ever woken up in the morning and felt totally inadequate? Inadequate. You know, I used to, I used to have not nightmares. When the pressure was on, I would have nightmares about being back in college and being in a class and there would be a major test and I didn't know that we were going to have a major test and I didn't study for it. Or that I was in uh, the business and there was something that had to be done and I didn't know that I needed to do it. I mean, I would wake up with these feelings of anxiety and fear and inadequacy. Well, I want to read something to you. 1 Corinthians 1, it says 26. He said, for you see your calling, brethren, brethren, you see your calling, how that not many wise men after the flesh, and it says not many mighty, not many noble are called. You know, I love that verse because it's check, check, check. Not many wise, not many mighty, not many noble, not many noble birth are called. Not many people with status. It says not many mighty and not many wise. Not your educated, not your highly educated. It says, but God, but God, God, the God of the whole earth has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, that base means no reputation, no name, no noble background. And the base things of the world and things that are despised hath God chosen. You one of those? Thank God. Thank God if you're one of those. It says, yea, and things which are not to bring to thought not things that are. Because that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh. You know, if you have any, any trust in your brain, or you've had any trust in your talent, or any trust in your money, or any trust in your upbringing, then that does not glorify God. I remember God put me in the sign business, and I, when he said, I want you to do signs, I, my answer to him was, I am clueless. I am clueless. I came from a family that had no business people in it. They were either factory workers or teachers or preachers, no businessmen. And God stuck me in a business and made me a female businesswoman. And, and here I am, and I don't know the first thing to do. And you know what? God led me every way, every step of the way God led me. The first thing he did was he put me in a grocery store to learn how to do layouts because you're, all your signs have to be layouts. I learned how to do it there. He taught me. And then he moved me from job to job until it was time for me to, 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 do, the, to do the business totally. And then he put me in a storefront. And, and I, I had to follow the Spirit. I had to follow what God led me. And I loved it. Every time I would come up against a situation that I didn't know what to do, Doyle would share some kind of testimony. And it would be my answer. He would share some kind of testimony of when he was a veterinarian in the business, a businessman, and I would take those testimonies and I'd run my business with it. Let's go on. It says, verse 30, but of God, but of him are you in Christ Jesus. We are in Christ Jesus, who of God may, is made unto us. What is it made unto us? What is Jesus in us made unto us? Wisdom wisdom. Jesus in us is the wisdom, not our high education. Jesus in us is the wisdom. 
Oh, have you ever had those teachers that said you just weren't the smartest kid in the class? Well, guess what? You got the smartest in you at wisdom of Jesus and righteousness, righteousness, the right standing with God and sanctification and redemption, our, our ransom, our redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. God showed me everything I needed to do in the business. I remember one situation, a man of high, high business in, um, in, in the United States came into my shop and he was asking me some questions. That was when Frisco was first starting to be a metropolitan. And he was, he was putting, uh, he was building some high rise, uh, high rise office buildings in Frisco, the first ones we ever had. And he was the president of this company. And he came in, and he came in with millions of dollars they were putting into Frisco. Frisco was just starting. And he started asking me questions. And I was standing at the counter with him. And, and he asked me questions I had no answer for. But you know what? The Spirit of God did. And I listened to what was down here. And I told him what was in my heart, what God would put in there. And we were talking back and forth. We did this for about 30, 45 minutes. And he said, ma'am, I can see you know what you're talking about. And I remember thinking, boy, you have no idea. And he walked out satisfied. We did the business for them. And, and someone was sitting to my right uh, working on some of the other things. And when they, that man walked out, the person looked at me and he said, where did you get that kind of info? I said, from Jesus. Amen. From Jesus. From Jesus. That's where I got. I worked for corporations, that nationwide corporations, and it was always from down here. It was the wisdom of Jesus. Smith Wigglesworth gives a testimony that when God first told him to go travel the world and minister, Smith Wigglesworth said, I can't. He said, I, 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 there's two things I lack. Father, he said, I lack the money, and he said, I lack the brains. He said, I cannot remember things, and you know it. He said, how am I going to travel the world when I can't remember what I did yesterday? Well, you know what? God said, all right. And the next day, money started coming to him. People started sending him money. They didn't know where he was going. The people started sending him money. And you know what else he did? The father said, all right, now tell me what you did this last month. And Smith started writing it down, and, got, and he wrote everything down that he needed to remember for that month. And he said, all right, Father, you've proven to me, you're with me, and I can do this. And he traveled the world more than once. Our wisdom, our anointing, our wisdom in us from that gospel. You get that wisdom of Jesus with Jesus in you. And the only way you can get Jesus in you is the first thing you have to do is be born again. And when you are born again, the spirit of Jesus becomes one with your spirit. And with that spirit comes wisdom and righteousness and redemption and sanctification. And you can walk in the world in that wisdom of Jesus. And since he owns the world anyway, you're at the top. Now I'll give it to you. Read the rest of that verse. It says wisdom. Wisdom. What? Righteousness, righteousness, sanctification, sanctification, and redemption. And redemption. You see, I lived. <laughs> you do know in Argyle, 1972 to 1975. Pardon. And if you think for a moment, <clears throat> I didn't need those verses. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, I read them every now and then. <clears throat> Frequent. Not many body, not many noble, <clears throat> not many wise. I'm overcoming a lot. I got, well, there's four of them, isn't there? Right. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty, and base of the world, and things which oh, are despised. That's it. that's it, yeah. Yeah. I'd read that, and I'd think, where'd I fit? 
<laughs> Word up <yet. clears throat> But let me tell you, move on up. Wisdom. Amen. I've been here. I had to make that kind of decision. Amen. Jesus in me. I'd read that and I'd read Proverbs 8. <clears throat> Amen. You want to read Proverbs 8? Yes, that's a beautiful. <clears throat> it is so much better to have his wisdom than ours. Proverbs 8. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, all men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O oh, you simple, understand wisdom, and you fools, be you an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my mouth shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reigns and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasuries. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, and from the beginning, wherever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the earth, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. And when he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the foundations or the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed are they, they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me, wrongeth his own soul, and all they that hate me, love death. End of chapter. <laughs> Did I struggle to believe this was Jesus? Amen. I'd read that. Is this Jesus? Amen. Is this Jesus? There's enough in this eight chapter. Amen. To get me through Argyle. Amen. If this is Jesus. Amen. I'll tell you what, it wasn't easy to switch, but I did. I went from what I thought I knew to Jesus. You know, it, and Paul says it, you had to count everything you had as dung. Your talent, your wisdom, your brains. 
And doesn't he say there he was with the Father from the beginning? Yes, it does. Man, I was convinced after a while, if this is Jesus, I want all of him. Amen. And when I read First Corinthians, he's made, made unto me wisdom. And righteousness. Uh, yeah, righteousness, sanctification, what else? And redemption. And what? Redemption. Redemption, yeah. But I think, is this Jesus in the 8th chapter of Proverbs? I'm going to tell you, if you think our God was funny or fun or adventurous, uh, you're mistaken. Amen. And by the time I got out of there, I had no curiosity left. <laughs> Amen. I think I've said enough, don't you? Amen. What time? We have, it is 1129. 1131? 11, 1130. 1130. Amen. I'm through. So am I. I'm, no, I'm not. I'm going to tell every one of you. Get that eight chapter of Proverbs Amen. and read it until you believe it's Jesus. Read it to yourself. And you won't be the same person. Amen. <laughs> Making the switch. Oh, man. Making the switch from the flesh to the spirit. Well, that's how I did it right that's, there. That's what helps do it, yes. What, uh, what's verse 21 say? 21 says that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Oh, what's 22? It says, The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways before his works of old. That's, that's the one that got me. I thought, is this Jesus? Is the Lord here Jehovah? Amen. Read some more of that. Right. It says, 23, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the world was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I was brought, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. I love that. I know. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree, when the waters should pass not his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. How do you like that. that? I was by him. When Jehovah gave the seas of the sea decrees. Amen. Is that what that says? It says, when he gave to the sea his decree yeah, that see. the waters should not pass his commandment, that they don't go over his boundaries. I'll tell you what. I digested that chapter. Amen. That proverb, read digested me, you might say. Amen. Well, what are you going to do? We, do you want to do a couple of songs? Sure. Let's do some. Let's see, what do we do? Um, How about Alpha and Omega? It goes right with this. Well, let's do it. All right. Almighty 
What is that, 26? Yeah, I believe so. It's close. Wisdom. Right. He made it unto us wisdom. Well, come on. Pour it in me. Amen. And that's how I got where I'm at. Amen. Wisdom. What time is it? It is 1138. 38? Uh huh. Amen. You got more? No. I do. One song.
some. Amen. It's got a lot of things in it that has happened to me. Amen. And you. Amen. And anyone that's with me in water of life, anybody that's with me, that song sings about you. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Glory. You didn't make a bad choice joining up with Jesus who orders the steps of Royal Davidson in his word. Amen. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, multiplied under you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. See you tomorrow. God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.